What you are about to see is the reality of life for these animals, who were imprisoned on factory and pastoral farms. In just one year in New Zealand, over 100,000 goats, hundreds of thousands of ducks, 700,000 pigs, 24 million sheep, 4.2 million dairy and beef cattle, and 67 million broiler chickens are slaughtered so that you can satisfy your desire to eat meat. Every year over 67 million broiler chickens are killed in New Zealand. These birds are raised on factory farms like you see here, crammed by their thousands in small, filthy sheds. It may look as though there is plenty of space, but these birds are only two weeks old. By week four, the chickens have doubled in size and now have little space to move around. These birds have been selectively bred to grow exceptionally fast and environmental controls encourage them to eat almost 24 hours a day. As a result of this, their young skeletons struggle under their immense body weight. This causes leg deformities in many of the birds. The feathers get higher as the birds grow and those with deformities often starve to death as they cannot reach the feeders. At a mere six weeks of age, the chickens have reached their slaughter weight and are crammed into small crates and transported to slaughterhouses to be killed. At this Teagle slaughterhouse, chickens are left in these small yellow crates, waiting to be shackled and have their throats slit. Every year in New Zealand, hundreds of thousands of ducks are bred and farmed for egg and meat production. The fertilised eggs are collected and placed in the incubators you can see here, where they are kept warm and turned every 35 minutes. After 24 days inside, they are moved into these drawers, where they will hatch four days later. These ducklings are one week old and remain in this room under lights until they are about two weeks old. By week three, the ducks have nearly tripled in size, as you can see here. These ducks have been selectively bred to grow rapidly, making them more profitable for the farmers. This rapid growth results in the ducklings' young skeletons bearing the weight of a fully grown duck by the age of six weeks. Most of the male ducklings and some of the females are sent to slaughter. On this Walkworth farm, most of the female ducklings are retained for egg production. Females are then kept in sheds like this for about three years, in which time they collectively produce around 30,000 eggs a year for the domestic market. After this time, their egg production drops off and they too are slaughtered. At this Quacker Duck slaughterhouse, you can see the ducks in crates stacked, waiting to be slaughtered. At the rear of the screen, you can see the slaughterhouse worker placing the ducks upside down on shackles to have their throats slit. Over half of the sows in New Zealand are placed in dry cell stalls for either part or all of their 115 day pregnancy. Sows have strong behavioural desires to root and forage. Confinement and barren living conditions mean that the sows cannot carry out these behaviours. This leads to the development of abnormal behaviours, which the sows regularly repeat. Confinement also harms the sows physically. The constant kneeling on a concrete floor results in calluses forming on the sows' knees and can also lead to overgrown toenails, which results in lameness, foot injuries, and leg and foot deformities. On this Waikato pig farm, the sows are kept in small group pens, rather than sow stalls. 
while the pins allow the cells to turn around, they are still very small and filthy. The pins are caked in excrement, and the cells have no dry area to lie down on. Young piglets on the Waikato farm are confined to small pens, where, like their mothers, they end up covered in their own excrement. When we were on the farm, there were hundreds of flies covering these piglets, and the stench from the pens was overwhelming. On this farm in Levin, the fattening pens are in a large enclosed shed, where the piglets spend about four months with no natural light or airflow until they are sent to slaughter. By the age of only five months, these piglets are loaded onto trucks and transported to a slaughterhouse to be turned into products for human consumption. In 2007, there were around 112,000 goats on farms around New Zealand. It is becoming increasingly common for dairy goats to be reared inside sheds in a feedlot style system. These are called zero graze farms, meaning that the goats never get outside onto pasture to graze. As the goats will spend their entire lives in these sheds and are unable to graze, their food is provided to them daily. The goats eat hay from feeders and the rest of their food is provided to them on a conveyor belt. They are fed a mixture of grass, brewer's grain, maize silage, hay meal, canola and lollies. At milking time, the goats are taken from their sheds into a holding pen. They are then forced up a ramp onto a circular milking platform, which sits about a metre from the ground. As you can see here, several goats have fallen and are being trampled by the other goats. The teat cups are put onto the teats of the goats and the milking platform rotates. After a full rotation, the tent cups are removed and the goats are ushered back to their shed. This is the goat's daily routine until kidding time, which is around late June. As the goats are milked so frequently, they are susceptible to mastitis. This is an inflammation of the mammary gland, which can cause severe swelling, as you can see here. For the first 24 hours after birth, the kids are nursed by their mother, who gives them much needed colostrum. After this, the kids are taken away and placed in small groups where they are fed for three months on cow's milk from rubber teats. At four to five months of age, the kids are placed in the large sheds where they eat from the conveyor belt system and are prepared to be mated in the months that follow. Like cows, goats cannot produce milk unless they are first made pregnant as the milk is only ever intended for their young. These goats can be impregnated at the age of seven months and be producing milk within a year of birth. Male goats cannot produce milk and thus are not economically useful to the farmer. Furthermore, only a fraction of the female kids produced each year will be retained for dough replacement. Of the male and female kids who were not retained, some will be sold to other farmers as pets, but most to the meat industry.